excited for this new trail to be installed? I am. I've been riding it since it's been dirt. I think it's awesome. Yay, go trail. I think it's going to be a great public amenity. Hi, I'm Allie Brown, Be Heard TV on CGTV, and I'm here today at Roaring Fork High School in Carbondale, Colorado. Today, it's the ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Crystal Valley Trail. It's about to kick off. We've got runners, walkers, riders and bikers here, ready to check out the new trail. So let's go see the festivities. What are you excited about this new trail? Let's, let's well, go the, the, the new trail opens up a section of the, of the road down here that the last few years has had a lot of traffic, more traffic on it, so riding on the road is not quite so comfortable and the, and, the, and the bike path is beautiful. I'm just really happy we're able to pull this off. Mr. Jacqueline and I have been working on this for probably six or seven years. It would be great to have a really safe route for my kids to get into town. And just happy it's taken a long time. We've been going for, at this for about four years now, and now we're at the point where we can open up phase one. I, I, in the years to come, and as we develop this trail up to Crystal Valley all the way to, to Redstone someday, this trail is just going to get so much use, not only for people in the Roaring Fork Valley, but people beyond coming to visit. Walt Disney once said, if you can dream it, you can do it. We're here today to celebrate with a traditional ribbon cutting, the first phase of the Crystal Valley Trail, and thank those who have worked so hard and contributed to its efforts. Uh, before I start into my formal speech, just a couple of quick announcements. The Open Space and Trails Board has a table set up over there where they're giving out free water bottles and uh, bike bells. And for the kids, there's popsicles. And for those who are going to be heading up the trail, uh, the Carbondale Fire Department is here and they'll be happy to give you a mist before you head up or, or when you come back down to cool off. So thank you all. I'm George Newman. I'm the Picking County Commissioner and I want to welcome you here today to enjoy this trail as it winds up the Crystal River Valley. And as you walk up or bike up the trail, you can enjoy this, the, uh, the, the sounds of the Crystal River, the open pastures, and of course, Mount Sopris, never ending its presence. As with the completion of the successful Rio Grande Trail, which links communities throughout the Roaring Fork Valley from Aspen to Glenwood, this trail will eventually link Carbondale to Crested Butte. A total, a total of a little over 70 miles. This trail is really the result of a great collaboration and partnership from governmental agencies to local ranchers. And I'd like to recognize them today, thank them, and give them, your, give them an opportunity to share their thoughts on this dream and their vision and the history of this trail. It's all started with Picking County Open Space and Trails Board, and there's some board members here. I'd like to introduce and recognize them. We got Hawk Greenway, Tim McFlynn, who's the chair this year, Franz Froelicher, Annie Rickenbach, and we're missing uh, Howie Mallory. He's he's biking in France. He's on a different trail, but he's here in spirit. He's fourth in the tour. As I said, it all started with the Picking County Open Space and Board. It will continue with us. However, it could not have happened without the help from many of you here today. And I'd like to mention these and recognize these people, and some of them will have an opportunity to share their thoughts with you. The Colorado Scenic and Historic Byways Commission was very instrumental in a study that looked at the entire stretch from Carbondale to Crested Butte. Dorothea Ferris is here today. She sits on that commission. And she's a former Picking County Commissioner. Garfield County was a tremendous aid in contribution. Uh, Commissioner Tracy Halt is supposed to be here today. I know she had a uh, meeting in Breckenridge and she was going to try to get on the road early and get up here. So hopefully we'll see her. Town of Carbondale, your hometown. Yeah. 
Mayor Stacey Burnett is here today, and along with this great opening, it's the 39th annual Carbondale Mountain Fair. Can you believe it? 39 years. I think it's changed a little bit over those years. In addition to those I mentioned, I want to also thank and acknowledge the Great Outdoors Colorado, uh, more commonly known as GOCO. Amy Wesley is here today, if you'd raise your hand, from GOCO. GOCO has been a partner with Pickens County for many, many years, and they've generously donated to many of our open space and trails projects, not only in Pickens County, but also here in Garfield County and Carbondale. So thank you so much for your, your continued support of these great trails and open spaces. We also have Sean Yates here from the Colorado Department of Transportation. Is he still around? Sean, in the back, thank you very much. They've worked diligently on this. As you can imagine, trying to do a trail along Highway 133 has its own unusual set of challenges as well. So thank you for CDOT. We also received grants from the State Trails Program from the Colorado State Parks. The Aspen Skiing Company Environmental Foundation. And some of the ranchers that really helped make this possible by, uh, by granting us easements along their land and working with our trail crew to make this happen. The Jelinek family. Tom and Roz Turnbull. Phil Fails. And Marge Perry. So thank you all so much. It couldn't be done without any of you. We appreciate it all. So what now I'd like to do is introduce to you Dale Will. Dale is our director of Pickin County Open Space and Trails. Dale? Thank you, George. I know it's hot and I won't say very much except that uh, I'm really thrilled to see this thing opening. I've been working on it probably for 10 years since I was hired by Pitkin County. At that point, the Open Space Board had had been at it for six years following a study they did and it, it's been gratifying to see the coalition form up around this trail with the Crystal Caucus, the town of Carbondale, uh, Club 20 uh, and and the others that George has mentioned. Uh, we've had some interesting times th threading the needle up between the edge of the highway and the the river up here. Uh, it was also gratifying while we were working on the trail, we concluded a conservation easement on the Cold Mountain Ranch. And on your trail map that we have there, we show all of the, the properties that are along the trail corridor that are now protected by conservation easements. Uh, I want to recognize Martha Cochran with the Aspen Valley Land Trust as a partner with us in the, the land conservation efforts. So. I hope everyone enjoys this trail. I've, I've actually respected the closure until today. Uh, I know a lot of other people have been enjoying it, but uh, I can't wait to get out there and have fun. And I'm going to let Gary Tenenbaum, who is our land steward, tell you a little bit about uh, some of the specifics of getting this thing built. This trail was really easy to build. It took about a week or two, and it wasn't really that bad. Um, I, I, we started in earnest truly planning this trail in 2004. Um, we hired JR Engineering, and I just want to recognize Mike Brake. He's been on this project for the last five years. And Tom Newland, I don't know if your Tom's here, if he is, raise your hand. But they really started working with the county to try to plan a trail in the highway right away. And when we took this on, everyone thought, oh, phase one, this is the easy phase. And we have found out that it was far from easy. And it's just difficult, see, uh, when you deal with the highway right away, you know, there's a reason why that road is raised as high as it is. With all the irrigation that goes on above the road, it all seeps under that road, and then we try to build a trail. So we found an enormous amount of challenges that we have overcome to do this. I want to thank uh, Heil Construction. Uh, Chris Eckhart is here for Heil. They have dealt with us, landowners, you name it, to try to get this thing done for you today. Uh, we also have uh, our consultants, our wildlife consultant, uh, Colorado Wildlife Science.
Jonathan Lowski is behind you. Help us get through the wildlife issues that go along this corridor. And I think Stephen Elsperman, Elsperman Ecological, helped us with the wetland consulting. Someone's pointing to him right now. So yeah, thanks Stephen too. And so it's it's been a really fun, challenging project. I've been out this morning trying to see it finished. You probably, if you came up to Crystal, you saw us working hard. So I just want to thank everyone who's been part of it. The town of Carbondale has been a great partner and so has Garfield County. And honestly, I'm excited to see how many people have been riding it illegally. <laughs> but, you know, it's great because it just shows how needed this stretch is. Um, we have learned, I'll just tell you one more thing before I turn it over, that we had the Colorado State Patrol come out um, to try to slow people down. And within the first hour, every moment they could possibly get somebody, they got somebody. And they got people at speeds of 84 miles an hour on this stretch. And so <laughs> it, is, it is an amazing thing because even, you know, the construction people who've been out here, they've realized how dangerous of a stretch of road and how much safer it's going to be with this trail. So I really appreciate all the help I've gotten doing it. And I'm psyched to see everyone ride it in about five minutes, ten minutes. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. I hope you're starting to get a sense in terms of the partnerships that it took to create this trail. It's, it's truly amazing uh, the way the communities have come together uh, for the benefit for all of us. So I want to thank you all. I'd like to now have Dorothea Ferris come up and say a few words. Again, Dorothea serves on the Colorado Scenic and Historic Byways Commission and has a long history with this uh, as when she served as Picking County Commissioner. So Dorothea. Thank you. You have no idea how good it is to see this crowd out here. Um, I'm going to talk about the byway briefly. It's 205 miles long, and the reason I'm wearing this dorky shirt is if you don't know where the trail goes, you can look at my back and find it. It begins in Carbondale, goes over in Fleur Pass to the North Fork Valley, to the Black Canyon of the Gunnison, to Crested Butte, and over Kevlar Pass back to 133, following the ancient pathway of the Ute Indians. So 150 years ago, it was an unspoiled wilderness. But today, the byway represents a major transportation route. It was established as a scenic byway probably 25 years ago or so, and it has a corridor management plan that recognizes the geologic, scenic, historic, environmental, commercial, and human characteristics of each section and jurisdiction. The goals have always been to recognize the unique value of each section of the byway, providing information to residents and visitors about the special qualities of each section of the byway, and to identify and provide opportunities to get out of the car, touch the earth, and appreciate these places that we enjoy. Twelve years ago, the Byway Commission drafted the publication of a book that's on the table called the Elk Mountain Odyssey. It gives a history of this entire byway. If you don't have it, you want to know what went on here, you should read that. It's excellent. And if you want to donate $5 to go to the Crystal Valley Environmental Protection Association, drop it in the box and uh, we'll benefit from it. So today, we are celebrating the opening of a five-mile trail from Carbondale to BRB. When I first taught at Carbondale Union High School, which is in the current yellow brick building, which housed all the kids in Carbondale and was the only school in town, Carbondale was a little town surrounded by ranches. BRB was an open field where people had picnics, where I graded English research papers. And Redstone was a coal mining town. The Crystal Valley was undeveloped. In the 50 years since, our population has increased. The Crystal Valley has grown and changed. Trails now are needed to connect neighborhoods in Carbondale, and a trail connects Glenwood Springs to Carbondale, to Basalt, to Aspen. The five-mile trail from Carbondale to BRB represents a commitment from several jurisdictions, agencies, and individuals to provide a safe and attractive alternative for those who wish to get off the highway, to bike, to run, to hike, to push their kids, to walk their dogs, and enjoy the Crystal Valley. It provides a continuation of the wonderful neighborhood trails in Carbondale. It connects students to their schools. It recognizes the needs of the biking communities of Crested Butte and Carbondale and Redstone to provide a safe route along 133 and Kebler Pass. Only by working together can we hope to maintain the respect for and care of our unique environment in ways that both protect this special place and that allow those who've chosen to live here 
and those who visit here ways to enjoy and appreciate our Crystal River Valley and our mountain, which is Sopras. The beginning of the Crystal Valley bike path represents a major step, and I want to thank all those who made this possible. All of you. Thank you so much. Next, Rosia. Your mayor, Stacy Burnett. Thanks everybody for coming out today. It's really difficult to go last because everybody's already said so much. <laughs> so I'll try to keep my comments as short as possible in this heat. Um, Dorothea and George and Dale all spoke about the collaboration and the teamwork approach. In this valley, we talk all the time about regional entities getting together, committing funds and, and getting things done. And this trail is a really good example of that. Um, I'm proud to say that Carbondale was able to step up and help out, but it wasn't without um, tremendous support from GOCO, from um, Pigeon County, and especially their Open Space and Trails Committee. This has just been a fantastic project. Some things that, that haven't been hit that, that, that wasn't said earlier was the fact that part of this project was brought by a Safe Routes to School grant. And as we stand in this parking lot, this is our high school. And as most of you that either live here or know, it's, it's really difficult for our kids to get to school safely and have alternative means and getting bussed or driven. And now with this connection of the trail, it allows our kids to get to and from the, the north and south end and the east and west end of town from the, the high school to the middle school to the elementary school. And part of that was made possible by, by our Safe Routes to School grant. I'd like to thank not only the um, Picking County staff, but also our town staff for their work in securing this grant and the management of our project. Um, aside from that, I just want to say that Carbonell is so thrilled to have this right here in our town. With the raft of trail going from Aspen to Glenwood, Carbondale has always felt that it's the center of the universe. And by having this, <laughs> having this trail start in Carbondale and head up the crystal just secures our place in that thinking. So um, thanks for everybody coming out today. Enjoy the trail. Come to Mountain Fair and let's celebrate Carbondale.